Corn School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobe. Welcome to the Corn School. This is our final episode of the season, and we're going to finish up the year with a look at nitrogen and whether it makes sense to push an application to later in the season. Now, that's a question University of Guelph researcher Josh Nosalski and grad student Gavin Brady put to the test in research trials in 2023. You know, will applying different rates of N at V10 and V11 burn and damage the crop? Could there be a negative impact on yields? To get some answers, we'll kick things off with a visit to the Allura Research Farm for a look at the research trial. I'll then be joined by Josh Nosalski to discuss the final results. Now, Josh, the question is applying in late in the season, V10 to V12. You know, why apply in so late? You know, what's the event? Right. So uh, there's two broad advantages to applying in in season and then later in season you go. The first would be it gives the farmer more control. They have more understanding of what the weather's like, what the soil's doing, what the crop's doing. They understand market prices a bit better. And so they can make a nitrogen rate decision in season as opposed to putting their full end rate at the start. Now, um, in terms of applying it late, like V10, V12, we're pushing it with these applications because we're scientists. Would not necessarily be something you'd plan to do, but it would be something like if you plan to apply V8, V9, and you got pushed out because of rain, we're applying V10, V12, and we'll talk about a bit more why later. Um, so it gives you control over your full end rate. The second reason is in terms of environmental benefits, reducing nitrogen losses, in-season applications do better uh, than fully pre-plant, uh, depending on what pathway we're looking at, but that's the general rule. Hmm. So those two broad reasons gives a farmer more control on their total end rate to adjust it, and number two, reducing losses. And then finally, you know, farmers, depending on how they set up their business, there might be advantages to just logistically applying your end later in the season. But Josh, there are challenges with late application. Now what happens when you get in on the leaves and down in the world? Yeah, so when you get nitrogen on the leaves, you can get burn, which is basically when that nitrogen is, is uh, it kills that leaf tissue and there's no photosynthesis where that leaf is dead, obviously. So the question is, you know, what leaves are going to be affected? And we're really most concerned about damaging things like the ear leaf or the upper leaves. And when we see damage, how how does that translate to a yield reduction, or is, it, is there a yield reduction? I'm now joined by Gavin Brady. Uh, Gavin, you're running a research trial to look at the late in application questions. Tell us about your research. What's the setup? Yeah, so this uh, research trial, we're running it at three different locations, being the Ridgetown location, the Alora station, and the Winchester research station. So what we're doing is we're applying an aliquot of nitrogen into the world at that V10, V11 application in order to analyze both the, uh, the visual burn on the leaves as well as potential yield reductions down the road. So kind of what we've done is um, we've applied a 230 pound per acre upfront end application to the ground in order to remove the chance of an end response from happening and then we've come back in with three different rates being 130 pounds 65 and 43 pounds of N per acre which is applied into that whirl of the corn plant and then the balance of that 130 pound N application is put onto the ground in order to further remove chances of an N response when we come in with this late season N application. What about N source? Yeah, so in terms of end source, we're using both a urea and a UAN end source in order to analyze what these different sources do in terms of uh, visual burn and yield reductions. I know you haven't got yield results just yet, uh, but you have been doing making observations. Talk about what you've seen, you know, from a damage perspective, and, and basically what, what your takeaways are there. Yeah, so overall, just some like really broad overview is we're seeing with the urea source versus the UAN source is that the urea we're seeing overall lower leaf burn damage in comparison to UAN. So for instance, when we're up at that 130 pound rate on both these sources, with the urea, we're seeing a 25% leaf damage burn on that ear leaf versus an 80% when we go over to that UAN source on that ear leaf. So with the urea at the 43 pounds of N per acre, we're seeing 10% leaf damage. And then when we move over to the UAN, we're seeing that 63% leaf damage on the ear leaf. I'm now joined by Josh Nosalski. Welcome back, Josh. We're going to take a look at these results. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Oh, always a pleasure, Bern. It's nice to wrap up this 
really large study and show you some really good results that Gavin collected across Ontario. Uh, just want to quickly thank all, all the sponsors, NSERC, Mafra, Grain Farmers, Corteva, Agriculture, Agri-Food Canada, and shout out to Dr. Dave Hooker, who provided a lot of help with the design and uh, happy to talk about our results. Awesome. So, hey, let's talk about leaf damage. Um, I'm putting up a slide here. It's a look at the 130 pound end rate. You know, what does that tell us? Right, so here we can see percent leaf necrosis, and there was a two or three main storylines here. Um, now, Gavin applied this uh, nitrogen right into the world at the tenth uh, at V10, so the the tenth leaf was already out of the world. And when we look at the percent leaf necrosis for UAN and urea, the most damaged leaves were the ones that were in the world. It's kind of like they're sitting in a nitrogen soup as they're coming out of the world, and they're getting more damaged, as you can see. Uh, compared to the leaves that are already outside of the world. Uh, and then other main storyline is that urea was a lot less uh, damaging to the leaves. A uh, number of farmers will top dress urea, uh, you know, as late as V10. And they do ask, you know, how much leaf damage uh, or an yield reduction is, am I causing? So you have some numbers there. Uh, but certainly not as bad as UAN. I mean, the UAN was much more damaging in terms of the leaf necrosis that, uh, you know, Gavin painstakingly measured. Mm. Hey, let's uh, let's put up some yield data here now. And I guess that same story continues. Uh, that difference between UAN and urea. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So the UAN was way more damaging to the leaves uh, based on Gavin's uh, Gavin's data. And, and that translates to yield. You know, uh, UAN had a 7 to 17 percent yield reduction. Uh, relative to your controls, and controls are all 200 plus bushel uh, yield, so 7, 70% is just not really acceptable. Uh, uh, compared to urea, where, I mean, this is not even worst case scenario burn, this is just so unrealistic. Gavin was putting all of that urea right into the world, not really, that would never really happen in field. And at most, you're getting an 8% yield reduction, but that's again, not even realistic. Uh, so I think it's a good news story overall for those that are top dressing urea. Um, you know, top dressing UAN, you, you need to be m much more considerate. Uh, another thing to mention here is that, you know, when Gavin applied this nitrogen, maybe a day or two later, there wasn't any leaf damage, but it was really apparent a week or two after that end application. So for anyone that wants to do any scouting or look, hey, you know, I applied top dressed N, how much damage do I have? Don't do it two days or three days. You got to wait a week or two weeks to really see that damage because it's those leaves coming out of the world that are going to be damaged. Uh, so, so that's another another takeaway for for the, the viewers uh, out there. Mm. Well, hey Josh, uh, so, some great insights from you and Gavin. Hey, thanks for taking the time and working with me to bring them to our viewers on the Corn School. Uh, appreciate you spending some time to wrap up the season with us. Always a pleasure, Bryn. Thanks for having me.